you know, if you don't know who did it first, you 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 don't understand it at all. You know, you got to understand the game, man. You know, Most you definitely. need the Antonio Tarvas. You need to understand who Muhammad Ali to understand who's Antonio Tarva. Most definitely, bro. You know what I'm saying? I get that. Yeah, for a sure. Of, a lot of these young guys, they they don't understand. I'm like, it's a disconnect. And I'm like, you got to know where it's been before you can understand where we're going. Welcome to the Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast, starring Hugh the Boss. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast. I'm in the studio with my guys today. Yo, they call me Q the Boss. Boss, so look, I'm excited today, guys, for those who don't know. Let's run the likes up today. Let's get this guy an ovation. You know, soon he will be in the room. Today we have Antonio, the magic man, Tarver. You know, today he's coming in. We're talking life. We're talking sports. We're talking about pretty much recovering from losing. How do you get back? You know, me, I've taken major losses in my life. And I think this, the true strength is showing that you can get back up and persevere even when things are not going the way you want. You know, I've lost a lot in my life. I've lost everything at one point. But again, my strength was shown by recovering and the willingness to get back up and not quitting on myself. So many people right now have lost a little bit of things and they still quit. But in life, you have to be willing to get back up. I think the true warriors are the ones who get back up. And today we're talking about that, getting back up and persevering. For those who know who Antonio Tarver is, you know, you should enjoy this episode because today we're talking about some amazing things. And I want him to pretty much tell you his story because a lot of people don't know, like, before he became Antonio the Magic Man Tarver, he was just Antonio Tarver, right? But he put his name on the map. And I'm excited to actually do this interview with him today because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a fan. You know, I'm a fan of sports, period. So any professional athlete who makes it to a professional level, I don't care if it's a season, I don't care if it's a 20-year career, you have to respect it. Because there's so many people who play sports and never got to those magnitudes, right? There are so many people who box professionally and never made it to any, anywhere. But today I'm excited to say that we have this guy coming in the studio and he's actually going to jump on a live with us and we're going to talk about it. I'm excited about it. For those who know who it is, let's give it up for him one more time. You know, but before he comes in, I want to tell you, like me, I'll give you a little testimony, a little background for me. I lost everything at one point. You know, my arrogance, my uh, unwillingness to be humble, you know, there was no humility in me. And I lost everything. And I think it was God's way of uh, humbling me. And the fact of the matter is a lot of us aren't humble. And we're not humble not because of the fact that, you know, um, life. But sometimes in life you have to be humbled. And there are a lot of people who aren't humbled. You know, they need to see that you're blessed. No matter what your circumstances are, you should look at life as being blessed. There are tons of people don't, who don't realize how truly blessed they truly are. But again, today I'm excited. Y'all going to hear Antonio Tarver's voice, and we're going to have this conversation, and we're going to talk about a lot of good things. You know, we have a lot of special guests coming. You know, I've been waiting and building up this platform, and actually now it's time to start adding guests. People keep asking me to add guests, but I honestly wanted to get our team straight get everything organized, get everything right before I started jumping prematurely. But now, they said, what well, they said, I ain't have time before. But now I got time today, right? You know, we, we ready. You know, my guys, we ready, we, we prepared. You know, but I want somebody that, that want to call in right now. You can call in. Tell me a time that you lost everything and actually had to build yourself back up. While he's getting ready, we'll have this conversation. And now, you know, for me, I lost everything. And I'm going to be honest with you, like, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me by losing everything because it showed me my strength. And, and sometimes we don't look at life like, how do you measure true success if you've never lost, right? You know, you, when you always win, you think that's a part of life and you think that winning is everything, but it really isn't. You know, the true humble people and the true greater, stronger people are the ones who can persevere even when things are not going the way they want, right? And that's one thing I had to learn. And I'm, I'm excited that I'm actually able to have this conversation with a great, like, uh, Antonio Tarva. I'm so excited because now I get to have a conversation with someone who actually 
who, who's, who's seen ups and downs, who, who knows what it feels like to be criticized and judged and talked about and wanting him to lose and people counting you out and all of these things, but yet and still persevering. It takes a, a true warrior, a true champion to persevere even when things are not going the way you want. So many of us only want things to go the way we want. You can't look at life like that. Life don't always happen on your time, but life happens on this time. And you have to understand that even when life is happening on this time, you got to be comfortable with what's happening, what's happening now. Some of us are not present in our reality. And I'm going to call it what it is. We're not present in our reality. You have more strength than you think you do. You have more capabilities, more uh, anything, man. You can do more than you think you can. But the fact of the matter is if you always give yourself an excuse, you're going to always lose. Because an excuse is a reason to lose if you really evaluate it. The more you give yourself an excuse, the more your mom will believe that you're supposed to be losing. There are so, so, so many people out here that can do so much more, but they don't believe it, right? And the reason why they don't believe it is because of the fact that they may have grown in environments or around people who are telling them that they can't. I'm going to tell you something. You will not if you don't believe you can. And a lot of people don't believe they can, so therefore they will not. And as long as you continue to believe that, you will not. You know, the words you say out of your mouth give, give life, right? A lot of us don't understand that words have affirmation behind them. You can truly talk yourself into a bad situation. And that's reality. You know, how do you recover from a loss, right? How? But a loss is a part of growing. The reality of all things, we say on this podcast all the time, you don't lose when you learn from the loss. You only lose when you don't learn anything from the loss. In order to learn, you have to lose. Learning is a part of, losing is a part of learning. And that's the truth. But today we want to talk about this topic. We got a special guest coming in the studio very soon, guys. He getting himself situated. Antonio, the magic man, Tava. You know, very excited, very excited. Let me give my guy his flowers because he's one of the biggest boxing fans that work, at, work with, with this podcast. Let me give my guy Chris Richards his flowers. This guy gave us so much information on this boxer. Man, Chris is like the biggest fan. And, and Tava, when he comes in the studio, I, I definitely want to make sure Chris get to say something to this man because, you know, it's, he, he, he's a big fan. He's a big fan. And the truth of the matter is, we, 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 I love people that, that respect other people's gifts. You know, a gift is one thing, but to, in order to take your gift to the next level, you have to push yourself to the next levels, right? So many of us don't push ourselves to the next level. But this is what, I, what we have to start doing now. We got to learn how to push ourselves. For those who want to call in right now, call in before we get live, you know, before he comes on, you know, 516-246-5172. Today we got a special guest. His name is Antonio, the magic man, Tava. And for those who don't know who he is, let me give you a quick background. This is the guy, and, and, I, and it bothers me to say it because I am a big fan of him. This is the guy that knocked Roy Jones out, right, in his prime. This is the guy that, you know, stopped Roy Jones. And, and Roy Jones, anyone that know who Roy Jones Jr. is, know that was a bad man. That was a bad, bad, bad man. As a matter of fact, what? let's answer this caller. Let's answer this caller before he gets in. Caller, what's going on, caller? What up? It's Dominic. What's going on, Dom? Dominic. What, what's good? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, bro? What's good? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm... Um... I'm 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 doing good. The topic is definitely a good one. I I mean I can't think of a time when I've actually lost everything, but all I know is like, you know, like that, but that's probably also because I'm actually really optimistic. Like I try to like stay like as positive as I got as I can despite my circumstances. Like I know like there's always like a light at the end of the tunnel. So like I really don't look at like losing everything. I look at like for every loss there's some kind of gain. I mean there's I you know, there's got to be. I respect that. I respect that. So basically, you're saying you learn from anything that you go through. Yeah, yeah. Fact, fact. Yeah, definitely. You know, you, I mean, everything makes everything makes you wiser. There's there's a lot of things that you can learn in life, and and you know, you just 
you know, you just look at things from a clear perspective. Like, I mean, I, I, um, I know like, um, like, 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 like I know just recently I had, um, somebody just try to hit me up that was, um, that, 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 that was, um, that, that was somebody that was actually somebody that thought was an old friend of mine that, um, turned out to be somebody that was a true narcissist. And yeah. whenever he tried to call me and, and, um, like try to get back in the picture, like that's when I showed my true strength because not only did I ghost them, but I told him a bunch of times, like, no, dude, I don't want nothing to do with you. Like, you know, so like he was the really loose around, not me, because I basically told him, like, no, I'm done. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you got to know when to walk away, right? You got to know when to end in, in, uh, yeah, exactly. communication. Yeah, no, that's, that's one thing I've always been... And, and, and like, I, like a lot of the times, like, I look at it now and I'm like, it's like one of those things, like, damn, I should have done that way sooner. I know it's better like than never, but it's one of those things that's like, damn, like, you know, like, I know, like, I, I know, like, sometimes I hear about, like, narcissistic friendship and relationships in the beginning, you're, like... I, I may have been kind of quiet because I didn't know exactly what was going on. But now, I, at, the, at this point, I'm like, I'm to the point where I'm just standing up for myself. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done. Listen, let's give it up for Dom, guys. This guy said he's standing up for himself and he's not allowing no one to take advantage of him anymore. Dom, I'm going to give you your flowers, Dom. You know, it's so strength, man. And I appreciate you so much, Dom. You know, Dom is an amazing guy, man. For those who don't know, Dom is a religious supporter of the Don't Let That Go Over Your Head podcast. This guy is amazing. You know, um, I'm happy I actually got to meet him, you know, talk to him rather. He's an amazing guy. You know, he's very, uh, very, very strong-willed, and he, uh, he, he supports extremely, right? So, guys, you know, we got a special guest coming in into the studio today. They call him the Magic Man. You know, Antonio Tarver. You know, we, we are talking today about persevering through hard moments. You know, when things don't go the way you want, how do you persevere, right? It's so easy to quit, man. And, and I realized, like, in my life, I've been through so much. People are like, yo, you're strong. And I'm like, I'm only strong because I had no choice, right? If you have choice, then you, you'll see your true strength. Like, I didn't have no choice. It was either sink or swim. And I think that's the best thing that ever happened to me. I learned how to swim because it was either I was going to drown or I wasn't. And I told myself, I refuse to drown. I refuse. I knew by any means I was going to get back up and keep fighting. And that was my reality. It was my only opportunity was either being successful or not being successful. And I decided I'm going to be successful. Because it's weird. I'm going to tell you all something. That the way you work hard to be not successful, if you do the opposite, you'll become some form of successful. It's just an opposite thing. Like you're doing everything that's working against you not being successful. But if you notice, if you do everything that'll help you become successful, you'll become successful. It's just the opposite. The polar opposites of life. Doing the things that you don't want to do so you can do what you want to do. That's how life operates. When you do the everything you don't want to do, ultimately you'll be able to do what you want to do. But a lot of us don't see life that way. You know, we look at it like, look, I'm going to be successful, wasting my time, sitting around every day, and things are still going to happen for me. The other day we was having a conversation. I had to tell a guy. He told me that he thinks he's special. And I said, special is an acquired thing. I'm going to tell you, special is, are you willing to do what others aren't willing to do to be successful? If you're doing exactly what everyone that's doing that's not doing well or doing, you're not going to win. How? How can you win doing all the wrong things? And that's what someone has told a lot of people in society to the point where people believe that if I can do the wrong things every day, I still will be successful. That is insanity. That is insanity, guys. I don't know who's created this narrative, and, but again, it is what it is. It's like, how do you tell somebody that it's not true when they already made reservations that is true? But again, growing up, you know, when starting in the back of the race, I always knew that I wasn't going to be here. You know, I just did. You know, I, didn't, I realized I didn't want to be here forever. And I, I said to myself, by any means, I'm willing to do what it takes to get out of the situation. Sometimes in life, you got to be able to tell yourself that. You can't wait for others to tell you where you should be at in life because I realized that there are a lot of people, they put limitations on you, right? 
based on the beliefs that their selves are. If they believe that they can get to a level one out of 10, they're going to automatically assume that you can't even get to a level one because they don't want to see you surpass them. So when you're dealing with certain people, you have to be mindful of that, right? This is the mentality that we're creating in order to win. You win by creating this mentality. A winner takes a mentality. A loser also has a mentality. Some people go to situations before anything even happens, they already talk, counted themselves out. How did you learn how to count ever since you were a child, but you've never counted yourself in? Every time you've counted in your life, you've never counted yourself in. A lot of people are always counting themselves out. They skip the number, and the most important is, this, is their self. Whatever number you are, that's the number you should be counting the most. You got to count yourself into the game. A lot of us aren't doing that and fearful to do it because it's easier to say, I submit, I quit, I retreat, and I surrender. But you cannot surrender in life. You got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting, guys. And those that are the strong ones are the ones that will keep fighting. I decided to keep fighting. You know, I decided I'm not going to allow myself to cry about what didn't happen for me, right? There was a thing that I hated talking about growing up. I was a good football player. And at one point, I hated talking about football. And the reason being is because a lot of people that were around, around me always reminded me about how I was supposed to have made it pro. And it got so sickening to the point where I didn't even want to talk about football anymore. Because every time we talked about it, it was, you supposed to have made it to the NFL. You know, you supposed to have made millions of dollars playing football. But in my mind, after a certain point, I think listening to them so much kind of made me nauseous. And I'm going to tell you why it made me nauseous is because they put their expectations on what they wanted me to be, to be that. That wasn't in my cards, right? It didn't happen. But I can sit back right now and kind of thank God it didn't happen because what's meant to be will be. And right now I'm living the dream that I'm supposed to be living. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. But it took me a while to understand that. The more I kept putting their expectations on myself of what I see myself to be, the more I devalued myself. I started telling myself that I was a loser based on their trajectory, trajectory of what I'm supposed to be. Their expectations. I'm supposed to be pro. But it didn't pan out. So ultimately, I felt like a loser at times. And that's the truth. The more, the more... You know, but I'm asking myself, you know, I'm asking myself, why, like, why, why is this going on in my life? Like, why, you know? But, you know, you sit down and you evaluate certain conversations. You know, how do you, how do you reprogram a mind that's been programmed? How? Right, guys? This is the issue. You know, he said um, he's having technical difficulties, guys, so we're trying to get him in. We're working, we're working, guys. Don't worry about it. But again, my expectations on myself was low because I believe that I, I, was, I wasn't successful because I didn't make it pro. I think that's some big shoes, man, when people believe you should be something that you're not, you're not and you don't see yourself being it. After a certain point, it took me a while to forgive myself. Because it wasn't that I was mad at myself that I didn't make it pro. I was mad that I didn't make it pro for the other people who believed that I was supposed to make it pro. That's crazy. You know, but that's the reality. And that's, that's the hardship I had to go through. Guys, we're trying to get him in this room right now, you know, having a little bit of technical, uh, technical difficulties. Good? All right. So he's good. So guys, yeah, he's coming in right now. We're working on it right now. He said something's going on with his laptop. But you know, that was my dilemma. You know, my dilemma was fear. My dilemma was scarcity. I, I, I wanted more, but I was scared to do more, right? And the more I was scared to do more, it was the more I did less. Ultimately giving myself an excuse not to win. Yeah. So somebody call in right now. Call her. Call in right now. 
877-337-5172. Someone call in right now. Let's talk about it. When, when was a time that you decided that it was time for you to do, uh, to just take your life in your own hands? You may have lost, but it was like, you know what? You're not going to stay losing. Robin. Yeah. So we, we're trying to figure this thing out real quick. Now my guys are behind it. You're trying to get them in the room. You know, but um, for me, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think it's scary at times when you're trying something new, right? It's so scary. And, and, and I think as I, I got older, I was very scared. And, and I think that's what it was. I was very scared. You know, it's, it's normal to be scared, right? Let's allow that. That emotion is very real. Guys, we're trying to get Antonio Tarver in the studio right now, guys. We're seeing what's going on right now. Let's see what's going on. Are we working on it? I don't know what's going on. My guys are trying to get him in. But yeah, it was, it's very scary when trying anything new. Anything abnormal ultimately becomes fearful. And me, I was very, I was very fearful to try anything that I didn't know. I think the biggest fear I've ever had is when I got out of my, I got out of a certain neighborhood and moved into a new, new neighborhood and I really realized I didn't fit in. Like the lifestyles that these guys lived and, you know, the traveling. Somebody has a guess. You know? I guess? That, that. But again, the losing aspect of life and allowing yourself to get accustomed to losing is not the, the right thing. We should never allow ourselves to get too comfortable with losing. He's loading up. All right. So, guys, he's coming in right now to show that we have a guest. We're getting excited, you know. You know, but I, like I said, go back to our what's the name? You know, we, um, yeah, coming in right now. I can take there that. it is. What's happening? That's the, the man, the <laughs> myth, the legend. Let's give it up. Let's give it up. Oh, I'm excited. Yo, the magic man is here, guys. Mr. Tarver, how are you, boss? What's up, Quinn? I'm doing good, my brother. Thanks for having me, my guy. Listen, bro, I'm a big fan. So if you see... The, the smile a lot is because I'm a fan, man. You know. I appreciate it. Listen, my guy over here in the studio, one of my producers, man, he's over here going crazy right now. Come say <laughs> hi, man. I told him before we start, I got to let him say hi. Come say hi. Right, Come yes, say hi, man. Did. Right here. Come say <laughs> hi. Come over. Sure. What's up, my guy? How's it going? I'm a Roy Jones fan, but I respect everything you do inside the ring, my brother. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Listen, I meet a lot of celebrities, but it's not too often I get to meet uh, people I truly respect. I met a lot of celebrities. You know, I own a nightclub in the city, so I meet a lot of artists. But I'm, I'm an athlete by heart, so I get hyped when okay. I meet fan, uh, 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 athletes. So let's let's talk That's about you, man. Like like, how was your how was your beginning in life? Oh man, my beginning was like you know typical. It was tough, you know. Came up in. Uh, Tough uh, city of uh, Orlando, Orlando, Florida, mm -hmm. you know, Ivy Lane, you know, uh, the inner city, you know, uh, neighborhood was tough. You had to know how to fight and protect yourself. You know, I had three beautiful sisters, so I was the only boy, man. So, you know, I had to knuckle up. You, you, you the feel? youngest? You the I'm young next to the oldest, but I only have three sisters, no brothers. Oh, I see. You had so, to learn. What about your father? Was your father in your life? Well, no, he wasn't. He wasn't present, but I knew my father and my family, man. Uh, he went to Vietnam and, and kind of struggled with, uh, a, you know, adjusting to life after that. And, uh, you know, he, he struggled in and out of uh, uh, with uh, addiction, you know what I'm saying? But I think when you look back at those times, you know, a lot of our young men went over to Vietnam and, and didn't come back the same brother for whatever reason. But that was just one of those things we had to, you know, build from, learn from and grow from, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, he passed a few years ago, man. But, you know, before he passed, you know, um, all of the unknown became known to me. So it was kind of full circle. You know what I mean? It was kind of, you know, we patching everything up and uh, we let bygones be bygones. And and that was a real, I believe, void in my 
in my heart for many, many years, man, because, you know, I wasn't fortunate enough to have a, a father present, but I did have a, a strong, tough mom, man. And, uh, you know, she had to be, man, you know, in order to raise us, provide for us back in those times, man. It, it, you can only imagine, you know, how hard it was. You know, something funny, like, as a man, you know, that talks a lot about um, traumas, PTSD. I talk about these things a lot. And um, I make myself very vulnerable. And the reason being is so I'm trying to show more men that they can be vulnerable. And I want to give you flowers for actually embracing on that topic because there's a lot of brothers that truly believe that everything is about this masculine and this alpha energy. And being vulnerable sometimes is allowing another person to see the insight on you. Like you being a strong professional boxer and allowing another person to hear that says a lot, man. It shows that you're comfortable with and secure with who you are. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, you got to be, um, you know, because I'm the only one can walk in these shoes. You feel me? So, uh, no, um, I've, I've had to learn, you know, a lot along the way through with my experiences, man, having to overcome some of my obstacles. You know, it, it just it, it it gives you thick skin and, and just really a, a unbelievable faith, you know. And I think when people say faith, man, it's like, you know, it, that word, everyone uses it a lot, but when it's time to demonstrate it, you know, it's true. That's, that's when you're really tested, man. And, and I think I passed the ultimate test when it comes down to faith and believing in yourself. And I know I couldn't do that all by myself. You know what I mean? Agreed, agreed. So I know that, you know, I, I have a, a personal spiritual type of relationship with, with my God, with God. And, and I just, it's a personal, it's a personal thing, but it is real, man. And I think when you look back at my life and all the things that I've had to overcome and the blessings that I've had, man, um, you got to know that there's, there's been someone there with me, walking with me every step of the way. From a, sure. from, a, from a man to a man, here's my question for you. How do you, how did you personally, like, okay, I noticed when you're up here, everyone loves you. When Most you definitely. come down, things change. You know, speaking that from, that's my testimony also myself. So how do you decipher between who's real and who's fake? Who's here for the moment and who's here for the reasoning, like for, like for me? How did, you, how did you learn how to navigate that? Oh, man, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Um, I think if you stand on 10, I think it's going to navigate itself. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, if you don't change and you stay loyal to who you are, I think it's going to navigate itself, but you know, you got to believe people when they show you who you are. And then, you know, you got to treat them as such, you know? And I was, um, I was telling the guy to, uh, just the other day, he was telling me about somebody old and money and, uh, and he kept telling me about it. And I'm like, bro, you know, forgive the man. And, and you know, it's when you, when you look at, it, I say, forgive him, accept the And if he couldn't, Give it to you like that, then you know he didn't have it, bro. Agreed. You feel me? Why are you going to just keep lingering on with that? You feel me? Like, either forgive the guy or, you know, just don't mess with him no more. Handling him as such. You know you can't trust him. You can't do no business with him. But you don't have to hate the guy. You just handling him as such. That sounds like growth to me, right? Yeah, you most know, definitely. You know, it sounds like growth, you know? You're exhibiting a, a perfect example of growth. You know, a while ago, me, I would have probably got physical. You know, because I, th <laughs> you know, I'm being honest. I thought that's how you handle everything at one point, where everything had to be physical, man. But here's my question: as a as a boxer, right? How do you show poise, even when you're not the aggressive? When someone's being aggressive, and, and I want, I, and I use this through life, and I know you're gonna give me something that I know somebody on this live can use through life. How do you show poise, even when when someone is like say they on you, and you like, oh, you on me? But how do you show the, like like pretty much the poise and not show that yo, you, I'm hurt. You know, how do you do it? That That is a, a very, that's a talent, bro. It's a real good talent. And uh, you know what? It's, it's a lot of people don't have that. Yeah. But you just, gotta, you know, people say sometimes I use the analogy of when you in a, you can, the, the room can be burning around you, burning down around you, you in flames, mm -hmm. but you, you know, you fanning those flames. You know what I'm saying? You're not panicking while you in the heat yes. of battle. Yes. And so it's the, person that can slow everything down and become and show compose, I think that's the person that really has control of the situation. And being poised has been my, you know, has been one of my, I think, best tools 
when I when I when I stepped in that circle, being poised, and it allowed me to really put on that poker face, man. Yeah. And, and so even when you hurt, not showing pain is is something that it can really do a mind jet a trick on your opponent. That's a it. mind eye trick on your opponent for real. You know what I'm saying? And so I've always been cagey like that. I see. In the room. I see. I never really went in there physically. I always went in there mentally. I, I wanted just, to out the opponent. I wanted to be two or three steps ahead of this guy. I wanted to know what he was trying to do to me before he even knew it. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I approached it, man. And that's how I, I stayed clean, man. I ain't really, I ain't get beat up. I ain't taking no punishment. I ain't really get hurt. You know, I got out, man, unscathed pretty much when you look at it. Yes. And I think that's a testament. It was a testament really to my IQ, to my toughness, mm -hmm. and to my will to win, man. And I, I mastered my craft, bro. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand how many hours I put in. You feel me? And, uh, you know, even through through the Olympics and everything, that really, really, that structure, having that structure. And I know that's what it takes to succeed, man. Uh, you got to have that structure set up for you. And it wasn't, it wasn't until I got to the national level where I really had that structure. I didn't have to worry about a lot of things that I normally I would have had to worry about out in the real world. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Once you can give these young men structure at an early age, I think you can really pour into them. You know what I'm saying? I agree. I agree. Because when you can have the structure at school, but if that structure ain't at home, it's going to be a, um, it's going to be unbalanced. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that structure was important for me. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, Today we was watching your uh, your knockouts, man. You a dangerous boy, man. I was like, <laughs> dangerous. Listen, I'm gonna tell you why it's dangerous because it, it semi looks kind of effortless with the knockouts. It don't look like you trying too hard. I've watched fighters get in the ring and they look like they trying to take your head off. Most your, your punches look so. It looked like I was like, wow. Like I, I ain't gonna say you based on your man. I don't want to say it. Like my guy getting mad. You know I'm about to say it, but I told him I had to bring it up. You know, um, the Roy Jones fight. Did you expect that? Are you? Are you? 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 You knew this was coming. See, that's that's kind of weird, man. It's kind of tricky because it, it was something. It was something about it. Yeah. Because it, it just didn't happen when you all saw it. You know that that thing had been developing for a long time. And, and when I look at, you know. Uh, faith and, and and just putting that work in, you know yes. what I mean, man. Yes. I, people don't understand, bro. It, nothing was handed to me. Nothing was given to me. Yeah. I earned everything I got. And and when you look at how tough it is to succeed in this game, with politics and everything, you know, it's always playing a factor in in in, in everything, man. Bro, you know, um, no, nah, I earned that, bro. I, I earned that. I believe it. That's what. That's what I think people took light of, man. They. They kind of thought that I I just appeared out of nowhere, but nah, bro. It was a lot of hard work, and a lot of people believe. Oh, if Roy was in his, yeah, you know. My thing is, man, they never saw anybody compete at that level against Roy until they saw me do it. You feel me? And I agree. that was the difference. It was me. That was the difference. It's hard to believe that I'm him. Yes. You feel me? Yes. Period. And, yes. and no question about yes. that, yes. bro. Like, and I think that's when I think that's what people are gonna realize once they keep getting the information, bro. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? Really you know, your story looking is into the story, yes. Which I truly believe is the greatest story never told, wow. and uh, you know that's coming, bro. Wow. But your story, your story, in the sense of Roy Jones being so big at that magnitude, right? It was like a David versus Goliath, man. It was like you know, like. I'm not saying you're small, but name-wise, right? But the fact of the matter is, what you said, I remember, I think it was uh, the, the, the fight where he, you said something crazy in the beginning. And I was like, that man got hard. That man got hard. I'm going to be honest with you. I, and I watched it like three, four times. And I said, yo, that man got hard, man. You know, one thing I tell my guys all the time, you know, you'll be surprised at what you can do when you believe you can do it. And you had Definitely. to have that belief that you could do it. You saw yourself as Goliath before you became Goliath, right? You, I mean, David, you knew I was the one that was going to take down Goliath, right? You knew it. I did. I did, man. But it worked. It's, it's like I've worked a lot of years for that. Um, 
I just had a notion, bro. I, I felt like I had I was one of the most talented, gifted fighters the game has seen. And I, I've always thought that. And and when you look at my accomplishments and my my success, and you know, my record speaks that. Yes. But uh nah, they didn't I didn't I couldn't have never drew it up like that. That you know, but I did believe, man, that I was if I couldn't do it, I don't think it could have been done. And I believe that, you know, I really, truly believe if I wouldn't have got it done, I think Roy Jones would have probably rolled off in the sunset. Nobody ever been able to to crack that uh, what you would call that mystique of of uh, invincibility. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't think they would have ever figured that out, man. But my talent was there, bro. We fought at 13 years old and that kind of gave me the confidence that, you know what, I belong on that stage. You know what I mean? I belong in that moment. You feel me? Um, there's a lot of things that happen. People don't really realize, you know, there was one time and I'm gonna give you this little nugget, bro. Yeah. Um, there was one time, you know, Roy Jones was really trying to sign me, bro. Wow. He was trying to sign me to his promotional company. Wow. You understand? And, you know, uh, there was a time he flew us out to Pensacola, me and my guy, uh, Ronnie Smith, Fernando Vargas and his management team was there. Wow. wow. Bro, Roy Jones was on the phone. I'll never forget it. His uh, lawyer, uh, Fred Levin, was right next to him. He was on the phone with HBO and Kerry Davis, bro. Wow. And, the, and, the, and I told him at that time I was an amateur. I told him right there I couldn't sign with Square Ring because, you know, Roy's the champion and I'm campaigning at light heavyweight. Yeah. So it'll be a conflict of interest, bro. And you feel me? And, and HBO was the biggest network at the time. I could have really been shooting myself in the foot. You feel me? But that's just the confidence I had in myself, bro. And sense. I knew that it would be a problem with Roy being champion, being my promoter, and me campaigning at light heavyweight. So somewhere along the line, I kind of felt like, you know, we probably be in a meeting one day. So you knew it was meant. So you was like, I can't do it. They thought I was crazy then. You know what I'm saying? They say this kid must be crazy. Listen, to be great, you got to be a little bit of crazy though. Yeah, yeah. That's a crazy sure. story. I didn't even know that y'all fought at 13. 13 years old, man. That's crazy. Sunshine, Sunshine State Games in Gainesville. Um, yeah, man, Roy, Roy was a bad boy, always have been, but I was a bad boy and always have been. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Me? Yeah. All the way back, you can, you can go look, check my history record. I've always been a problem for everybody, bro. Now, see, yeah. let me ask you a question. As a boxer, if you can go back to the very, very beginning of your career, what would you do different? Like, what would you do absolutely different? The one moment or a big moment that you could do different, what would you do different? I, man, I, I, nothing, bro, wow. nothing. Because wow. everything's supposed to happen just like it did. When you look at history, nah, I wouldn't change a thing because, you know, there was a lesson in all of that. You feel me? Um, nah, nah, I wouldn't change nothing, bro. I respect nah, that. Everything was meant that. to be. I respect you feel that. Me? So yeah. as a man, right, and if you had to give, like, a younger guy game that wants to come into this game, what would you tell him? Like, if you could say something to, like, a young... Because there's a lot of young people who are inspiring to be either professional, anything. What would you give them as a professional athlete? Man, just uh, really believe in yourself, number one, but be willing to put that work in. And, and people ask me, oh, what it took. I mean, it took everything from me. <laughs> you feel me? Everything. Like, I, I was willing to do whatever it took, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that I was ready, and uh, I had the ability and the talent to conquer. You feel me? So, yeah, you just got to see it, bro. You got you to gotta be able to visualize it before it can really uh, manifest itself. Yes. yes. If you can't truly see it, you know, you feel me? Like, And you got to truly believe it. So I saw it, man, and I, I ain't questioning it. So that's, that's how I was able to do it. Who's the, who's the greatest fighter of all time? I hope we're on the same page. The greatest fighter of, of all, all time? time? Let me go heavyweight first, because I know it's divisions. So I, come from, I came from that era, though, bro. You know, it's Ali for me. It's Ali for you, me also. Ali for me, undoubtedly, because of what, you know, the man that he was and, and what he stood for yes. and what he represented, you know, for, for sure. And, and after that, 
success wise, you got you got to go with Money Mayweather. Of course, of course, he was a pioneer of the game and still, you know, uh, setting the bar and really, you know, paving the way in, in this game. And uh, now, from a business standpoint, so those two guys are the ones that truly, I think, moved that needle and, and made people see the sport in a different light. So, action from a different sport, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Don't I'm tell your Michael, age. Don't no, tell your age. You know I'm at that age, MJ. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at that age, you know, because in the moment he didn't lose, bro. You know, you got to take that in consideration, you know. Agreed. when it, He never lost in the moment, you feel me? And so I think that separates him from everybody else. And, it, you know, it got to be LeBron close second. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. With just being a pound for pound now, you got to go LeBron, LeBron with everything that he's able to give the game, pound for pound. But MJ is the is the GOAT for me. Let me ask you a question. You got a 13-year-old Antonio Tarver standing in front of you today. What do you say to him? Mm. Oh, man. Um, I would say... That's tough, bro. Yeah. Um, at that time, because 13, yeah, I was a wild boy at 13. Me too. Me too. At that time, <laughs> man. I was insecure as hell at 13, though, man. I was, I probably, it, knowing what I know now, probably gave me a good ass whooping at the time <laughs> before I gave me some type of parental advice. Yeah. I probably needed that. <laughs> uh, man, um, knowing what I know now, I would just say, man, just – you know, you can't do it on your own, bro. You feel me? No matter um, how talented, gifted you are, you, you can't do it on your own. You know, keep good people around you, bro. You know, and if you find a friend, you know what I'm saying, hold on to him. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. That's what I advise anybody out there right now. So would you say your, your biggest influence in your whole life was your mother? Biggest influence? I would have to, have to say my mother and my kids. Wow. Wow. I think my mother and my kids' biggest influence, yeah, because that's 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 what we did it all. That's why I did it all. You know, that's who I did it all for. You feel me? Yeah. And, uh, that's why I'm still out here doing it all for them. You feel me? So, yeah, it's for the it's for the name, the legacy, and and everything that that's important. Listen, you know, and we got some boxers up here in Long Island, New York, man. I don't know. I might want to send some names to you, man. We got some boys. It's tough up here. Freeport, hey, uh, Long Island, produce some talent. Man, send them to me, brother, because that's what I'm about, man, developing championship men in and outside the ring. You feel me? And, and and that's what I think just leading by example, man. I think I can pour into these young men's career and, and really get, be the bridge, yeah. you know, to really, you know, uh, finding themselves and, and realizing their goals and dreams, man. That's what I want to do. I want that's, that's how I want to give back to the sport of boxing. The sport that gave me everything, you wow, know. Wow, wow. As a man, bro, me and you not knowing each other from a hole in the wall. The fact that you were just like, yes, let's do it, says a lot about you as a man. If I didn't respect you before, I respect you even extremely now. You know, my guys was like, yo, Ant I said, Antonio Tarver. Like, I'm still a fan in life. I don't care what level I get to or what level I don't get to. I'm a fan. And I, and I love meeting people who I witnessed and watched. I sat on my couch with my big brother, and we started acting like we was Roy Jones and Tarver, right? <laughs> and, I, and I was Tarver, and I worked him. He made me be Tarver. So it kind of <laughs> made me a fan. And I'm going to be right. honest with you. He was, I'm Roy Jones. But when Roy Jones went down, my brother was like, now I want to be Tarver now, right? <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, there's a lot of people on this live right now. If you can give them any insight in life and all the walks and the things you've been through in life, what kind of uh, walk or experience would you give them? Because some kind of knowledge would you give them? Because everyone is listening right now. I'm seeing a lot go crazy right now. Man, you know what? Travel, bro. Get out Get out of your comfort zone. Travel and see the world. You know what I'm saying? It's an amazing place, and, and uh, it's a lot of difference out there, man. And, uh, you know, so experience things. Yes. Don't be afraid to get out there and experience things. Yes. You know? Yes. That's what I would tell anyone, man. And I think... Uh, when you set your goals, you know, make your goals, uh, you know, value some things more than just money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but that's important, too. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's not everything. You know what I'm saying? Agree. Agree. Build some great relationships. 
you know, and I think that'll be your bridge to success. I agree 100%. You know, for me, growing up, I used to, I used to, I used to uh, work a box at something called the PAL. And yeah, that's how I yeah. used to get a lot of my aggression out, man. I used to, man, spar. That was my favorite. He's like, you don't even want to do the bags. I just wanted to spar. You know, me yeah. not having a dad and watching my mom struggle. It's six of us. I was right. like, man, that's how I got my anger out. And I was like, you know, I just want to spar. You know, but I'm, I'm loving what the sport is actually transitioning into right now. I'm happy that a lot of uh, minorities are getting great opportunities economically, right? You see a lot of guys make a lot of money, man. A lot of money. You know, we talk about the new fight that's coming up right now. Uh-oh. Spence and, uh, and Crawford. Who you got? Oh, yeah. Who you got? That's a big, that's a big one. Everybody knows it's 50-50. It is. Um, but I'm a fan of but Crawford. Like, you know, that's my guy. Um, I can see both of these guys winning. Yes. I can see what they both need to do to win. But like I say, I'm leaning toward Bud. Uh, I just think for... For one, he's shown me that he can do so many things in the ring. Yes. Uh, even though what Errol Spence does, he does it great. Yes. Just haven't seen him win in a multitude of ways. Yes. And I, he's going to have to do something different, something we haven't seen him do before in order to be Crawford. Be Crawford. And, and I'm not saying he's not able to do that yes. because when you get a fight like this, they both going to raise they. They seal him. They might do something that we ain't seen them do in their whole career because that moment going to call for it. So yeah. that's the type of fight I'm looking for. Look, I'm going, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. You know, <laughs> and I'm more of a fan of Crawford because, uh, you know, I, I didn't even, I forgot that he's got shot. I forgot. Yeah, well, I completely yeah, he, forgot about that. Right? I was watching the story yesterday and I was like, yo. Yeah. Shot in, shot the, in head. the head. To so come back, you know, wow. <sighs> If that ain't a story in itself, you know, what is a story, right? That's right. amazing. That's amazing, bro. And I was and like, then, wow. While I was watching, I was like, wow. You know? You can see where that determination comes yes. from. Yes. You know? Yes. This guy's a real is. But again, we're not perfect. Yeah. And so Crawford does have some things that he does that they can take advantage of. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you know, if this is a habit that he does, they can expect for him to do it on fight night. Yeah. And I you know, I can't give him the game, though, but that's just by me watching it. it, it there is some things that Crawford do that, that could make him vulnerable to a guy like Errol Spence, being that Spence is bigger and taller yeah. and, and he's coming in with the power so and aggressiveness, man. So it's going to be a heck of a fight. I don't think this fight can not live up to expectations. You think Spence, you think he's I, a heavier hitter? You think he punches harder? That Well, the guys that have been in the ring with both of them say that, Errol Spence is the is the much harder puncher, wow. and I find that hard to believe because Crawford looked like the guy that that can create the knockouts. Yeah, I see it all the time. All you got, the time, you got a resume in knockouts. You got a resume. When I'm, I'm big on that boy Tank Davis right now, though. I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh yeah, the face of boxing, man. Listen, that boy lives up to his name. Boy Tank is a tank, you know. Yeah, and, I, and see what makes Tank such an explosive fighter is his timing, and he's a calculating fighter. He a thinker in that ring. Yeah. He ain't just in there physical. No, he's setting traps. He running in you, running you into these major explosive counter punches. So right now he's on his game and he's in his bag right now, man. I uh, uh, can't say enough about Tank Davis. And I hope he get his personal situation behind him, man. Uh, I, I heard that, uh, you know, he's sitting down right now. But uh, hopefully he put that behind him and yeah. he can just move forward. Agreed. Move forward, he can just keep going. You know what I'm saying? Outside of, outside of all the name boxes that we know that you've been in the ring with, could you tell me someone that didn't make it to the magnitude of what they could have, but they were definitely a good fighter? We like to give flowers up here. It's not always about the big names. It's always about everybody, right, and showing love. What fighter did you see maybe even growing up? Like, wow, this guy motivated or encouraged, right? Could you give me to a name? Be, to be honest, bro, around that time when I first started boxing, we had a a, a boxing team from the Southwest Boys Boys Club and Church Street Station in Orlando that these young men, bro, were some of the most gifted, talented fighters. That's where I learned the game from, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, that goes to show you, bro, like sometimes we can't win in life, yes. you know? You know, you might be talented, you might be gifted enough, but you don't get the opportunity because for some reason you made one bad mistake, Agreed. you know? 
So, so guys like yourself, men like myself, man, we want to try to catch these guys before they, they make that bad mistake. And then, you know, allow that light bulb to go off. See, once that light bulb go off and they realize that they can become more than even they thought or they even imagined, yes. then that's when, that's when we've done our job. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. We planted that seed. Yes. We planted that seed. And so and I was one of those young men that was just in a room one day and a guy named Tommy Dixon walked through the door. Okay. He, he was a Navy boxing championship, right? A champion from Carver Shores. But that belt to me, it symbolized everything. And that light went off. You feel me? And I, I'm like, man, so I stuck with it. You feel me? And then, you know, my life took a meandering turn. And one day out of nowhere, boxing was a thing of the past. I'm just sitting down one day in the living room and Roy Jones pops up on the TV screen, bro. In the first round of the Olympics, and we, we know what happened. He got canceled. I mean, he they robbed him in the Olympics. Yeah, he got robbed. But but if I wasn't home that day, sitting down on that couch, I would have never witnessed it, and I would have and that and that and that dream of mine would have never came to light. You understand? But I witnessed this myself live on TV. I'm like, whoa! This is the same guy I was in the ring with at 13, wow. battling battling to a split decision. Wow. You feel me? So right then, I knew exactly what I what I was supposed to do with my life. I knew why I was here, my purpose in life. And I got up and, and ran three miles, bro. And I ain't stopped running since. And wow. that, that's that's a part of the, the story too. Wow. You feel me? Wow. How I made it, how I made it on that couch to witness that fight. You know, so Roy Jones was really my biggest inspiration to get wow. back in the game. Wow. You feel me? Wow. So they say, you know, when your right when your when your rivals become your when your idols become your rivals, not that Roy was ever my idol, but he did inspire me to get off the couch, bro, and go chase that gold medal. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm thankful for that. You wow. feel me? Wow, wow. Because my life, my life was in a mess at that time, bro. I wonder and if he so, knows that. He knows that story, though. I wonder if he. I wonder if he knows that though. Roy, I think he found that out. Yeah, he found that out uh, since then. Wow. You know, we just worked together, me and Roy, man. We worked side by side at Pro Box. Uh, we were commentating. So it was nice to work with Roy and, and be able to talk to him. And it's all love, man. It's always been respect. But when you look at how I came up, you know, um, you know, it, it's just, bro, I couldn't I couldn't see it any other way. And I tell people, man, it could have been anybody. You know, bro, I had to become champion. I wasn't going to let that dream go for nobody. So, you know, I understand Roy was a popular, legendary type of fighter, bro. You know, but he set that bar and I reached it. And, uh, you know, that's just how it was, bro. But, yeah, that was oh. good. Those good days, man. But being 54 years old right now and, and, and being as, you know, have, still having this much energy in life, bro. You don't look, you you don't look at that all. I'm sorry. Thank you, man. At all. And, and that, again, is a blessing. You yeah. feel me? That's Lesson. You look like but, you can jump in the ring a little bit. I mean, I, I still <laughs> don't know how I go. You feel me? <laughs> I, I still don't know how I go, bro, for real. <laughs> you know, I got to ask you this question. On your way up, right, what was the moment when you realized you really made it as far as meeting a celebrity? When you was like, I made it. Like, I'm here. You know what? That, that, that time really came... Um, it might have happened before then, but when I met James Brown, bro, like, wow, wow, and when I wow. met James Brown wow. and Augusta, Georgia, bro, like, it was uh, pre Olympics. We had already made the Olympic team. I think that I realized that this this shit different, man. Yes. You know, like that was yeah, because I remember my grandmother, my mom. You know, James Brown was like a, a major figure in in the music game. So yes. I think then it, it kind of changed for me, man. I'm like. Yeah, and that was like in 90, 95, I think, 95, 96, early 96. That's amazing. See, it's funny because it takes real ones to admit. Like, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I had 50 Cent at my club not too long ago, like about a month ago. And when he came, I'm one of the biggest 50 Cent fans. You know, people say we look alike. I get it all the time. I was yeah. going to say that. Y'all do look <laughs> alike, like, bro. <laughs> and I'm telling you something funny. Like, even Yayo said it. Yayo was like, yo, y'all look alike. But anyway... 
he came, he he comes every time I see him. I get like like I, it brings me back to my childhood, right. or my youth, yeah. rather you know. And it's like I remember when Get Rich or Die Trying dropped. I was how big of a fan I was, you know. Even Ja Rule, you know, I'm still a fan of him. You know, people say whatever they want, but I'm still a fan of him. This yeah. guy, we, we talking about Ja Rule, man. He was Drake at that time, right? So we're gonna call it what it is, man. I don't lose track of who was who. You know, and right. I think that's what a lot of the young people do. That's why they don't know where they're going because they can't see where they come from. Who did it first? You know, if you don't know who did it first, you 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 don't understand it at all. You know, you got to understand the game, man. You know, Most you definitely. need the Antonio Tarvas. You need to understand who Muhammad Ali to understand who's Antonio Tarva. Most definitely, bro. You know what I'm saying? I get that, yeah, for a sure. Of, a lot of the young guys, they, they don't understand. I'm like, it's a disconnect. And I'm like, you got to know where it's been before you can understand where we're going. I believe that. I believe that. You know, I was always, uh, you know, one of those guys that was like historian of the game, went back. You know, I, I gave homage and still does, you know, uh, because I patterned my game after all the greats. You know, you'll be a fool not to. You feel me? So we already see that it works. Who you, you, study, know? Who you studied the most? Man, Ali, Sugar Ray, Marvin Hagler, all the greats, Aaron Pryor. You know, Alexis Aguayo, man, uh, Little Red Lopez, all these, uh, Livingston Bramble, all, all these guys, man, Boom Boom Mancini. I, I, was, I was just a fan of all the, the popular legendary fighters, man. And, wow. you know, um, yeah, so, you know, Sugar Ray was one of my favorites, too. Tommy Hitman Hearns, legends, man, and these guys, Tommy, they did it. Tommy, every time Tommy can't, I can't even – Recall Tommy's fighting no more because every time I think of Tommy, I think of the the Martin scene with when he beat up Martin. <laughs> yeah, that was legendary, man. <laughs> That's probably his greatest fight, right? He beat up Martin in his prom, you know. But I'm a fan. Right. Of, I'm a fan of sports, man. As I said, man, you you are amazing. And my guys in the studio are smiling, man, because they see how humble you are, man. I just want to tell you, you're a humble soul, bro. And it's amazing even having this uh, conversation with you, man. He's like, I can go all day with you, man. It's like, wow. But I'm catching up with Thank an old you. friend. I appreciate it, man. Listen, you're an appreciate amazing it. man. What's next to come for, for you now? What's what's next up? Hey, I, I'm having difficulty. I'm having uh, a little trouble with the audio right now. I said, what is, what's next to, for, to come for you? What's next up? Hey, right now, uh, I'm, I'm doing some commentary, man. I'm going uh, to be down in Miami, Floyd Mayweather, having his exhibition fight against John Gotti the third next week, man, okay. right there in Miami. Uh, we're going to be at the Fountain Blue. I'm hosting a little mixer uh, there Saturday. So that's the move, man. If you're in the city, Definitely. come on out, man. Definitely. Floyd Mayweather, the money team in Miami, going to put up, be putting on an exhibition. So I can't wait. Big Baby Miller will be on the card. So uh, if you're in that Miami area, that's that's what's going on next weekend. Listen, anytime you're in New York, I'm going to roll out the red carpet. I, I know you probably don't party no more. But I have a nightclub in the city, a big, a big space, a big club, you know, well known. You can look it up. It's called Cavalli. You know, it's. Uh, oh, I'm coming through. Let I'm me know. Coming through. I done had everybody yes. in there. Mellow and everybody come, man. You know, I enjoy. Nice. It. So you let me know when you're in my city, so we can definitely roll out the red carpet for each other, man. That's what's up, Q. That's what's up. Quinn. Listen, his love is Definitely. love, bro. Love is love. You know. I appreciate it, man. Keep doing what you're doing too, man. I like that. I like the movement. Anything I can do to help and support you, bro, let me know, for Definitely. sure. Definitely. One hand wash the other, two hands wash the face, my brother. I appreciate you so, so much, man. You're an amazing brother, man. I'm actually more understanding of who you are today more than ever, man. You're like, wow. And I know a lot of people that's on this live is like, wow, he's an amazing man. You guys, you see, there's life after sports. This man was bigger than boxing. You know, he, he's a God-fearing man who understands who he is. Yeah. And to hear the yes. story of life coming full circle, that's the biggest blessing, man. You know, and, and he's also a father to his children. That's one thing we give a lot of flowers for. And I want to give you your flowers, man, for raising your ch your children up, man, to be greater people, right? Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Come on, no man. doubt. You know, my guy, I appreciate you. Thank you, my guy. Thank you Take so much. Take care, man. You too, Until my next brother. Time. All right. All right. Yeah, peace. Amazing man, guys. Amazing man. Amazing, guys. Wow. Yo, look, I'm blown away about how amazing this man is. Right, this guy is amazing. You know, we must say, you know, it's, it's you know, for, for me to get an opportunity to talk to such a legend, you know, and, and I'm smiling. I'm, to talk to a legend, 
of such a magnitude, right? It's a big blessing. And I'm, I'm sitting back every day, seeing my, my story come full circle. I remember, you know, growing up, I used to dream about doing some of the things I've done, right? And to do the things I've done in life, I'm astonished. It's not because of, uh, 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 without God, there's no way. And I want to tell anybody on my live today, if you believe it, you could achieve it. But before you believe it, I mean, before you could achieve it, you have to believe it. And everybody that's on my live today, I truly believe that you can be way more than you truly believe you can. But you have to believe you can. If no one believes in you, you got to believe in you. I'm talking about there's going to be so many obstacles along your way of you chasing and getting to the levels you want, but you got to believe that you can do it. So again, I want you guys to tell a friend to tell a friend. I love you guys. Until next time, don't let that go over your head.